Uh, well, David, it's disappointing news about the Crusaders teammate Braden Enor. It sounded like it happened pretty quickly and I guess unfortunately dramatically last night. Can you tell us yeah. what happened from your point of view and yeah, pretty frustrating for him, I guess. He's um, just come off a, a knee injury as well, so he had appendicitis, and um, he's all good now. He's got the surgery done, and uh, from what I've heard, is he's walking around and straight into recovery mode now. So yeah, but unlucky for him. Did you see him last night? Um, I've seen him over the last couple of days and he did say he was having a sore stomach and there's actually been a few of them happening down in the Crusaders and um, yeah, me, me and Bridgie pointed out that you might have to go see Doc so yeah, definitely unfortunate for him, like he's done so well to get back to where he needs to be and to have that happen is really unfortunate. You sort of know what it's like sort of having to go through sort of an emergency mm. sort of stomach surgery yourself. Um, what has the journey been like for you to sort of on your recovery and now here and all this? Yeah, it's, um, it was a long road, eh? Um, it was pretty unclear for a lot of it, but um, you sort of had the surgery done and it was soon a little bit of unknown of when I was about to come back, but at that time COVID happened um, and it gave me the opportunity to recover and get my strength back and um, yeah, get back into what I love and which is playing rugby, so extremely grateful to be back in this environment. It's unfortunate it circumstances, right, that um, Braden is out, but it does present an opportunity for you to potentially and most likely play. Has there been any indications like that so far? Oh, look, not, not yet. I'm just trying to, um, you know, get back into the swing of things in this level and I'm just um, extremely grateful to be back in this environment and um, learning off the world's best. So, um, yeah, I just can't wait to get stuck into it. What's it like being back? Did you think this day may not come? Yeah, sitting in the hospital bed, I definitely th thought this day was never going to come, but I, you know, had to put a lot of hard work into getting back to where I needed to be and um, there's a few conversations that... Um, I had to have with the coaches around where I needed to play and um, yeah, I just wanted to play really well for the Crusaders and um, I want to carry on and do that um, at international level. Did you need to shift the midfield or was that just what's um, It was just a thing that sort of Razor you know, mentioned to me and yeah, I just sort of ran with it and um, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed playing in the midfield this year and um, yeah, certainly want to carry that on. Is there a real opportunity there now? There's only three fit midfielders, one of them and um, you know, Quinn who's, who hasn't played at this level before, so I guess that you know, stops are pretty thin. Yeah, I'm certainly searching for an opportunity, but um, look, I'm just, I just want to learn as much as I can. I've been out of the environment for a, a long time now, and um, I'm getting a, alongside uh, ALB to, to really try to cement a position and um, yeah, just learn what he's done over, over a few years. And um, you know, he's a world-class player, so the more I can rub shoulders with him, the, the better I can be at the next level. What have you had to change about the game going into 12? Um, probably just putting on a wee bit more weight. Yeah, um, not too much. I think the skill sets that 15 offers um, has really helped me in, in that space as well. So yeah, just put on a wee bit extra, extra beef. How much you put on? Just a couple of kg, which has been good since coming out of the hospital bed. I, I lost nine kgs um, going to the hospital. So getting to be, back to where I need to be was the main goal. And yeah, putting the extra bit of weight on has been good. So where are you sitting now? Uh, 98. How does the environment in the All Blacks feel now compared to the last time you were in it? Oh, it's the same, mate. It's, um, you know, it's, you're extremely grateful to be here. There's a lot of other players that probably deserve to be here, and um, I'm just, I just want to take as much as I can and do, do the best for this team. Does it feel in some ways like this has been a gap? You know, like it's, you're a new, fresh face again, like it was the first time? Yeah, I think um, sort of the next generations come through. The, the likes of um, Dalton, Quinn, um, you know, the, the younger boys coming through, and it's cool to see. Um, the All Blacks evolving as well, um, getting out to the community um, like this area. Uh, it's awesome for me to experience that. I've, I've never been out here either, so it's been cool to see those changes. And you know, it's been awesome to come out here and experience you know the awesome community. We had a great harvest session last night, and yeah, I'm just extremely grateful to, to see myself back in this position. Those discussions with Razor shifting to 12. How much of that was because of the lack of players in that position, and how much of it was? For an eye on the All Blacks and you know, a potential opening or an opportunity for you to win some All To be fair, at the time it was just like he said, Oh, you're going to be playing 12, and I said, Oh, oh well, yeah, all right, I'll give it a crack, and sort of just ran with it from there. It wasn't, it wasn't anything about making the All Blacks, so it was just about where can I do my best for the team, and at the time I was playing in the midfield. So. Do you consider that a, maybe a realistic thought now that you've 
you want to play for the All Blacks, you might have to potentially put the fullback on the back burner. You still have it, obviously, mm. but maybe turn your focus more to the midfield. Yeah, for sure. I think um, you know I've got a job to do in the midfield, and that's focus on my role. So the more I can learn um, in the first couple of weeks and get my head around the game plan and what they want from me is going to uh, help me out in the To just clarify, do you consider maybe becoming full-time midfielder? I'm not going to scratch myself as a 15 just yet, but for now, yeah, full-time midfielder. Cool, guys. Thank you. Cool. Thanks Cheers, so. guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Scott, can you give us your uh, your view on what's happened in the past 12 hours with Braden? It sounded like he was maybe sore and woke up and he had been had surgery. Yeah, it's sore for a couple of days in the stomach. I'm not sure what it was, but we see it's um, acute appendicitis. Out for roughly five weeks or so. Doc's keeping us updated on that. So he's, he's in a better position than he was a couple of days ago. So no one's coming into the squad as of yet, but looking at Antolina Brown, it's like, looks like he's not doing anything with Luke Dalvin at the moment, just catching with the right and stuff. How likely is it that he'll be back to, say, game two? And what are your considerations about bringing someone into the squad? You're yeah, not sure when LB will be available. It depends on his progress. Um, but in terms of bringing somebody in, um, I think it's just within the squad at the moment. Um, there's been no no indication of, of anyone coming in, so we'll just work within the team and see how we go. Do you know what would likely change the I don't think anything. Um, there's a number of options that can be played in the midfield, um, so yeah, go from there. Fozzie mentioned um, Jordy Barrett was yeah. uh, potential there. How serious are you looking at that now? He played a lot of his junior rugby there, um, under 20s, so he's talked about being an option there as well. Um, so if, if we get Thin, I guess that's something you could look at, yeah. What's the key, what's the key been to the last couple of days? What, what's the biggest thing you've been trying to get into the team? Yeah, yeah just getting the team together, just connecting um, with each other. On the field, just a little bit of our structure and skill sets, the way that we want to play this year, some of the changes and tweaks. But also being in South Auckland, just being able to connect with community down here. We don't always come down here. So it's nice to bring training down here and connect with the first 15s and um, have a ceremony with our Pacifica community has been outstanding as well the last few days. As far as the way you want to play this year, has it been more classroom stuff than um, Predominantly, um, we've had three or four meetings now, um, just digging deeper into our game and getting the players' understanding of that. But also our skill sets, what's required, the game has changed a little bit. So we've just had to develop um, what we do as well. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen a lot of changes in the Super Rugby. So we, we like what we see in a, in a bit of that and we're going to adopt that into our game as well. With the defensive side of it, what, could you sort of touch on what defensive it's getting, changes have seen? Yeah, it's getting harder and harder. Um, attacks are really developing and the continuity of the play is outstanding. Um, so we're having... For example, the, the type forwards are having to be able to read what's going on and choose a skill set under pressure late. Whereas in the past, they just wanted to be really clear and decisive and give them one thing. And they're having to develop there. Um, backfield, there's so many multi options now that the attack can bring. So our, our back three being able to read all that and be in the right place at the right time. And do, do you do you want sort of watch the Lion series to see what new things come out of that? Is that something you do as well? Yeah, absolutely. I'm fascinated to see that series, see what the Northern Hemisphere is going to bring to a Southern Hemisphere side, and the way the Southern Hemisphere side deals with that. Um, but also France and Australia is be really exciting um, competition as well. I guess another opportunity to see what else can be done there and maybe something good could come of it? Yeah, so there's immense competition in this team and players just want to be on the field so um, we'll get to see that in the next few days. Um, but I'm sure the selectors have clearly in their mind what the next progressions are. Injury wise Scott, as you guys have been trained fully, can you give us an update around guys like Shannon Brazil and, and others? Yeah, just um, we're taking the advice daily off our medical staff and just seeing their progressions. Um, I'm not sure in terms of when he will be available. Again, it just depends on, on how, how we can go every day. Um, so he high ankle sprain. He went over that in the Highlanders game and he got a knock to the head, but there's been nothing um, around his head injury. It's just his ankle. 
Yeah, uh, the, uh, just his knee, just getting full confidence and strength back in his knee. Yep. How likely is it that David will likely start given now Braden is out? Can you give us an indication on that yet? You're not talking, uh, you're talking to a, a guy who's not a selector. So I don't select the team, so um, starting wise, that hasn't even been talked about. All we've talked about is the way we want to play and the skill sets and, and how we want to do that. So leave that till Sunday, I'd say. Yeah. Thank you. Is that us? Cool. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thanks, Scott.